Hello my dear friends, so welcome back. Welcome to your channel Cooking Astrology. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for subscribing my channel and liking my videos. Thanks a lot. So today I'm going to introduce one of the very unique concepts in Vedic Astrology and that is Malefic and Benefic Axis. I know many of you are familiar with the 12 houses of your Vedic Astrological birth chart and here particularly I'm only talking about the natal birth chart or the divan chart. So you see first and seventh house, second and eighth house, third and ninth house, fourth and tenth axis, even the eleventh and the fifth axis. So every house in Vedic astrology is deeply interconnected with the other house. And first house is you, and on the cop completely opposite side, you see the opposite of the first house. So that is a reflection that you are going to see. Similarly, second house is the family and eighth house your spouse family. Second house is your money, eighth house is other people money. So in that way, third house short distance travel, ninth house long distance travel, fourth house is your home, tenth house is your workplace. So you understand what I'm trying to say between the axes, like how in the Vedic astrology system, how exactly houses are formed. And I will tell you there are there is very great significance of the planets that are sitting in the axis. For example, if suppose in the second and the eighth house, there are malefic associations over there. There are very great number of malefic planets that are posited in the second and eighth house. So this is totally going to spoil the marriage and the married life aspect, even the family aspect also. It doesn't matter whether the dignity of the malefics are strong or weak, but it have the ability to give you the destruction in the second and the eighth axis. So in this uh, first video, I'm going to do it in a series. So you can find the uh, 12 videos in which I'm going to cover all the axis. So today in this video, first of all, let's try to understand the malefic and benefic axis association with the first and the seventh house. And please listen to these things very carefully. Even I'm going to help you to introduce to some of the more advanced concepts in Vedic Astrology. But first of all, try to learn what I'm trying to say here. See, suppose your first house and seventh house. In that axis, suppose there is malefic association over there. Or there are more malefics present in the first and seventh axis rather than the benefics. You can easily check, you can easily count. Suppose Saturn Mars is in the first house or maybe like Jupiter and Ketu is posited in your seventh house. So you can easily see there are like three malefics over there, Saturn, Mars, Ketu. And there is one Jupiter which is benefic that is in the seventh house. Let me tell you there is very simple concept. See suppose more the malefics in the first house, it means there is going to be more, more and more problems that you are attracting in your life. More the malefics in the seventh house, it means after marriage, you are going to attract more and more problems in your life. This is as simple as that. And here I will tell you, I'm not talking about the planet that are controlling your first and the seventh house. I'm talking about planet that they are going in the first house. Suppose some planet is controlling your tenth house. So that planet is going in the first house. I'm talking about that planet. Here I'm not talking about the first and the seventh house lot. You can please exclude that thing, okay? What is going to happen if suppose there are more, more malefics that are coming in the first house, it means you are going to face more and more challenges in your life. And if you want to see from which area or which portion of my life that major challenges are coming, directly look into the house rulership of that planet. As I as have given you one example, 10th house lord going in the first house and suppose this is a malefic planet. It means there is going to be lot of difficulties that that planet is going to bring with itself. At the same time, suppose there are benefits that are in the first house, even though their dignity is very weak. OK, suppose like some benefit planet like Mercury is coming in the ascendant and although like its dignity is very weak in your chart, but I will tell you the benefit planet have the ability to give you some protection in the first house. So they are going to offer you at some some point in your life. So they are going to offer you some level of protection over there. 
but on the other hand if the malefic associations are in the first house so they are going to put forth more hardships and challenges in your life and that you can easily see from which areas that challenges are coming in my life next i will tell you let's try to correlate this thing with the karmas also and i will here explain the rahu and ketu axis as well for example there are total 12 houses in vedic astrology and every house is as i told you connected with some other house so rahu and ketu they are always going to be seven places apart for example rahu and ketu they are posited in the first and seventh house maybe rahu in the ascendant ketu in the seventh or ketu is in the first house and rahu is in the seventh house what is going to happen there is going to be deep association if you want to look the major karmas or if you want to look into the backlog in my life like in in your past life in your previous birth what are the like uh, like pending karmas that are present in your life that you need to fulfill in this present birth so look into the rahu and the ketu axis the planets that are in conjunction with rahu and ketu axis in the first and seventh that are going to shows the karma that you need to fulfill in this present life suppose ketu is posited in the seventh house it means karma is deeply interconnected with your spouse or life partner because that is the house of your marriage and the married life aspect and at the same time suppose some benefic is also over there and some malefic is also over there for example ketu is sitting with mars and jupiter also okay so there is one benefic that is jupiter and mars is a highly malefic planet so what is going to happen jupiter on the other hand shows some blessings because as i told you benefic planet they are going to give you blessings they are going to act as a support system in your life or they are offering you some kind of a protection with regards to the seventh house activities but on the other hand mars is going to bring forth its challenges so this is the malefic karma that you need to fulfill in this present life even i will tell you the planets that are either sitting in the first house or in the seventh house you can exchange this system as well don't only think like that planet that are posited in the first house they are only going to give me the result according to first house no planets in the first house always going to expect seven places away okay all the planets they are having the natural drishti of looking seven places away so if suppose there are some planets that are posited in the first house they are expecting your seventh house so that planet they have the greater amount of influence over the seventh house as well in a way i will tell you you can rotate and shift your kundli you can make seventh house the ascendant and then you can start reading the result this is going to give you a similar or near about 70 to 80% of the predictions that are going to be near about same if you are going to look into your spouse and life partner chart as well because if you suppose you are right now you are a married person pick up the chart of your spouse or life partner look into their astrological birth chart their complete chart i will tell you 7th house rotation is going to be the exact mirror image of their astrological birth chart even if you want to look like how your life is going to change after spouse entering in your life so make 7th house your ascendant and then place the planets from your life partner chart directly into your astrological birth chart in that way you will be able to understand the more precisely and i will tell you if suppose first and seventh house is empty no planet is over there it means there is no any major blockages that are present in the first and seventh axis so there is no any major karmas that are coming for the first house and the seventh house aspect most of the charts you will see these kind of uh, like unique patterns and arrangements you will see i will tell you in astrological birth chart you will easily identify some kind of a patterns forming are over there so if suppose more malefics in the as i told you first and seventh so this is going to be a deep imprint of the karmas that you need to fulfill in this present life and even i will tell you one more thing vedic astrology is a very vast concept this is just the video which i shooted for the learning purpose so don't think like that uh, like uh, you need to just look into your axis and then you need to start applying the concepts over there as i told you from which place that planet is coming so which karma is coming to you so you need to look into that aspect for example eighth house lord going in the ascendant eighth house is the house of transformations so if it is going to be a benefic planet it means at the time of transformation you are going to have some support system if it is a malefic planet at the time of transformation there is no going to be any major support system over there
even the planet that are in conjunction with rahu and ketu axis they are also going to act as a transformational planets in your life any kind of antar dasha change in pryantar dasha or suksham suksham dasha any kind of a changes in these time frames they are also going to dictate whether the transformations are going to be in the positive direction or in the negative direction but i will tell you transformations are surely going to be there wherever the rahu and ketu axis are present i will tell you transformations major transformations in your life that are going to come from through the planets that are in conjunction with this thing that are conjunction with rahu and ketu axis you need to just keep this thing in your mind so that's it guys from my side in this video i hope you find some deep insights with regards to the first and seventh axis as well if you have any queries any consultations with regards to your astrological bar chart do contact me at my mail id i will respond you back as soon as possible so till then please subscribe my channel below and make sure to hit the like button if you really enjoyed this video and please don't forget to follow me on instagram as well and i'm going to meet you very very soon in the next video bye bye and take care